Hi there, welcome back. This is part two of the top 10 chemicals in your world. I'm sharing this with you because these chemicals are in your food, they're in your home, and they could potentially be having some pretty serious health effects. I want you to learn where they are and how you can reduce them little by little so you can minimize your exposure. I'm also sharing this with you because I too benefit from being reminded of these chemicals and where they are you know, because I can do better and better. Even putting this video together for you helped me think of a few things that I could shift and improve. So I hope that some of this will help you, that it'll give you some ideas for you to clean up your environment. So I'll keep going with number six through 10. If you missed one through five, they're in part one, and I'll post that link underneath this video on the YouTube channel. So number six is PCBs. These are industrial insulators and lubricants that actually have been banned since 1976. So since the 70s, they actually haven't been produced anymore, but they're still lingering in our environment and that's how we get our exposure to them. They're primarily in our food supply and it's primarily through fish, large fish like the ones I mentioned when we talked about mercury, swordfish, tuna, large salmon, and these toxins accumulate in the fatty tissues. So when you're cooking fish, when you do have your swordfish or tuna or um, you know big salmon steaks, you want to cook them in grills or um, in a container where the fat can drip away and minimize your consumption of that fat. Um, they're also present in soil, so produce, you want to brush uh, your produce when you wash them uh, so you can minimize your exposure to PCBs. Little by little, as time passes, uh, the PCBs will continue to disintegrate and our exposure will, will drop. Number seven is PBDEs and TBBPAs, you know, these really long, complicated uh, chemicals that need acronyms. Essentially what they are are fire retardants. And these fire retardants are actually linked to endocrine issues. This means uh, hormone issues. Primarily, they affect the thyroid. And in babies also, they're known to uh, cause damage to reproductive system, affect motor skills, learning, memory, memory, et cetera. So you want to do as much as you can to reduce your exposure and your baby's exposure to fire retardants. Where they are is on your couch, your carpets, your carpet pad, uh, your mattress, pillows, etc. You know, they're hard to avoid. Uh, they're in foam products produced before 2005, and they're also in electronics produced prior to 2014. As of 2014, electronics won't be coated in those fire retardants, but anything older than that would be. So, for example, with your babies, you don't want to let your baby take the remote control and put it uh, in their mouths. Um, but then you can start thinking of things, uh, steps in the long run that will help you reduce the fire retardant exposure inside your home. Um, that would be like I did last year, I replaced my bed and I did some research to find a natural, organic, no fire retardant bed at least no chemical fire retardant bed, uh, replacing your per furniture and pillows whenever you can uh, with uh, non-toxic options. And also using a vacuum with a HEPA filter, so that helps you filter out any kind of um, released uh, VOCs, not just from the uh, fire retardants, but uh, other, other compounds that are released into the air. And get rid of any old foam products, uh, say uh, pillows or couches where the foam is exposed and where you can see that foam falling apart, those uh, will release the fire retardants and increase your exposure. Number eight is perchlorate. I'm not even sure how to say that word, but perchlorate or perchlorate I don't know, is a rocket fuel oxidizer. This is essentially present in um, fireworks, rocket fuel, bleach, explosives, it's in some fertilizers and flares. What these chemicals are known uh, to do to our bodies, the health effect that they have um, is that they're affecting the thyroid gland and in particular they're um, affecting the thyroid's ability to take an iodine, and it's that iodine that then the thyroid uses to produce thyroid hormone. So a lot of thyroid issues are increasing in our population. 
What you want to do is investigate what is the amount of perchlorate in your public drinking water. Um, and uh, if you're not sure, if you want to be super safe, um, getting a reverse osmosis filter, which can be pretty pricey, um, is one way to go. Or finding a facility like I do. I get my, my water at the food co-op in Burlington, and it's reverse osmosis water, so it doesn't have any of the contaminants that we've been talking about. Um, the other thing is because some of these chemicals that we've already talked about affect the thyroid um, gland in its uptake of iodine, what's happening is a lot of people need extra iodine. And the other piece too is that many of us are iodine deficient because we don't have good sources of iodine in our diet. So taking an iodine supplement is going to address that iodine deficiency and it's going to help um, the thyroid in getting back up to speed. Number nine is BPA and phthalates, another difficult one to pronounce. BPA and phthalates, essentially they're plastic additives. BPA makes plastics hard and rigid, and phthalates actually make plastic bendy and flexible. What these plastic additives are known to cause in the body is endocrine disruptions, in other words, hormone disruptions. And these hormones are actually the reproductive hormones. So um, there's a link between these plasticizers um, and early puberty in girls. There's also link uh, a link between these plastic additives and um, low... Um, testosterone in boys and men and some uh, fertility issues. So with so many plastics in our world, there's a, a big question of what's the effect, what's the correlation between the plastics, the plastic additives, and the fertility issues that we seem to be uh, seeing increase. Now, where these plastic are, plastics are is everywhere. They are, the hard ones are in the water bottles. There are anything that's a PVC, you know, PVC pipes, uh, PV, P, BPA and BPB plastic bottles, the lining of um, metal cans, so the food cans that you get, that lining inside the can is a plastic coating that uh, in the majority of cases is BPA. The phthalates are in the soft plastics, the blow-up toys, the shower curtains, the rain ponchos, plastic umbrellas, um, plastic backpacks, etc. And they're also added to cosmetics because they help bind fragrances and colors in cosmetics. So what to do about this is to remove as much plastic as you can from your life. Use glass instead of plastic. Never, ever, ever heat a plastic container in your uh, microwave oven. Remove, replace your shower curtain and use a, pla um, a fabric shower curtain. And with cosmetics, what I do is I make sure that the ingredients are listed and that I recognize all of the ingredients because some of those ingredients can get pretty confusing and you might not know whether it's a BPA or our next class of chemicals are in the formaldehyde. So number 10 is the formaldehyde um, additives to many um, household products and cosmetics. Formaldehyde is a known carcinogen. It's a skin irritant. It creates um, breathing issues. And they're not just in cos cosmetics. They're also in pressed wood. So furniture made with that particle board, the fronts of drawers, you know, some desks and shelves and that sort of thing, cabinets um, are made with compressed wood and they off-gas formaldehyde. But it's also, like I mentioned, in cosmetics, nail polish, uh, beauty products, and uh, even some brands of baby wipes. So how you avoid these is when you're buying new furniture, doing a little research and making sure that it's not made with particle board, that it's actual wood, it's going to be a little bit pricier. Or if you do buy furniture that's made with uh, particle board, uh, let it off gas outdoors for a while before you bring it inside your home. With cosmetics, again, getting cosmetics that are safe enough to eat. That's my rule. Uh, my, my cardinal rule is to buy cosmetics that I could potentially eat and that I know all of the ingredients. So there you have it, the top 10 class of toxic chemicals that are in your world right now and how you can eliminate them little by little. You can reduce your exposure. 
Now that's what you do to re reduce your exposure on the outside, but you also need to, need to take steps to reduce your exposure on the inside. So do some research, uh, do a, a detox, look up what you can do to remove your um, remove those chemicals from from your body. In a few weeks, I'm also going to be sharing uh, some practical tools that I've put together in a really fun way that might be just the thing to help you. Whatever you do, take really good care of yourself. Take little baby steps to improve your health one day at a time, one step at a time. You can do it. Take care. Bye-bye.